This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Roll as always. It is so great to have you with us. Topping news, Grand Bahama and indeed the Bahamas have lost a warrior in the world of business. Former president and co-chairman of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Sir Albert, Mil Albert Miller, passed away at his home here in Freeport Tuesday afternoon following an illness. Tonight we take a look at the life of a man who has left behind a great legacy. Sabrina Brown reports. Albert Joel Miller was born in Miller's Long Island on February 23, 1926, and from an early age he aspired to be a police officer. Sir Albert eventually joined the Royal Bahamas Police Force and rose through the ranks to Deputy Commissioner of Police. Sir Albert's career on Grand Bahamas started out at the Bahamas Amusement Limited, where he held the post of Vice President and then President. His career later shifted when he took up employment at the Grand Bahama Port Authority authority, where he served as president for 25 years and then co-chairman. Sir Albert was known for his passion to see the city of Freeport grow and develop. During our last interview with the business mogul, he talked about how he worked closely with the late co-chairman, Edward St. George and Sir Jack Hayward, to ensure the success of Freeport. Not under his um, Edward St. George administration, a lot of things happened. Uh, Hutchison came in, harbor was expanded, deepened, uh, the container port, and there were some major things happening which brought report where it is today, but it was on a trend which needed to be continued, but it came to a great halt, and some people said it's because Edward Pass, and that might be part of it, but the economy changed. The noted businessman retired in 2003 and following Hurricane Francis, which devastated the island in 2004, he was asked by the late chairman Edward St. George to come out of retirement for a few months to assist with the restoration process. Sir Albert, who was humbled to have achieved such success, says he had a wonderful life. I enjoyed life, had a good life, lived to be 80-some, without being sick in hospital and all that. And I'm not well now, but uh, I'm moving around and I am, I don't want any sympathy. I, I'm celebrating my life. <laughs> Sabrina Brown, Saturnus Network News. Well, Prime Minister of the Right Honorable Perry Christie leading the long list of dignitaries offering condolences to the Miller family on the passing of Sir Albert Miller yesterday. Mr. Christie called Sir Albert an extraordinary Bahamian whose life bore the marks of high distinction. First, as a law enforcement officer of legendary courage, intelligence and integrity. And then, in the second part of his life, as an iconic indigenous leader of the growth and development of the city of Freeport. The Prime Minister says he was a tough cop from the old school, a policeman of outstanding ability and incorruptibility, a born leader whose personal example inspired successive generations of police recruits. At the time of his retirement from the force, he had risen to the post of Deputy Commissioner of Police. Destined to become the president of the Grand Bahama Port Authority and a major figure in the civic and business leadership of Freeport, he became the highest ranking indigenous Bahamian in the Port Authority. Sir Albert was enormously influential in helping the Port Authority to adapt to the changing times and to better understand its larger responsibility for the social and economic development of Grand Bahama. Now, the Prime Minister says Sir Albert was, together with the late Edward St. George and Sir Jack Hayward, an indispensable member of the triumvirate that held sway for decades over the nation's second city. Mr. Christie says Sir Albert was also a mentor and trusted advisor to successive governments, including his own, for which he has a debt of gratitude for his friendship. Also, the Minister for Grand Bahama, Dr. Michael Darvel, is issuing a statement on the passing of Sir Albert. Darvel says it is indeed a sad time in the Bahamas and particularly on the island of Grand Bahama as we mourn the loss of renowned businessmen. He says Sir Albert leaves behind a legendary story and a remarkable legacy. Darvel adds that Sir Albert Miller, formerly of Long Island, hailed from humble beginnings and eventually became one of the Bahamas' most prominent and successful businessmen. 
He says his impressive resume, although extensive, encompassed director of the Solomon Brothers Limited Pepsi Cola Bahamas. He also noted that he stands with his parliamentary colleagues, extending condolences to his lo loving wife, Lady Laurie Miller, and all of his children, Russell and Anthony Miller, and Deborah Archer, who themselves have become prominent contributing members of society and will undoubtedly carry on their father's legacy. And members of the business community also remembering the business icon, Sir Albert Miller. Old soldiers never die. They simply fade away. And that's how Sir Albert Miller was affectionately described by the executive board members of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce. A soldier for Grand Bahama, a general, a prolific entrepreneur, and a man who undoubtedly played an instrumental role in the development of Grand Bahama. In 2008, Sir Albert was presented with the Chamber's Lifetime Achievement Award, the highest award granted by the organization. And that is a testament to his uh, investments throughout the length and breadth of Grand Bahama and indeed the country. Uh, he was a very astute business person, but for those of us who knew him, he always had wise counsel uh, for up and coming entrepreneurs. Um, so Albert was really a no nonsense person and hence the name General. But I think at the end of the day, he really always had front and center in his heart the development of this country. Members of the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce who worked with Sir Albert regards him as a giant of a man and one who will most certainly be missed. He was definitely an integral and instrumental person in the second generation of the leadership of the Port Authority. Uh, he has a very unique style, uh, has been very effective in what he has done in his leadership roles at the Port Authority and the void that will be felt in the Port Authority will be a great one to be filled. I believe that um, his um, accomplishments will ever resonate with us and serve to motivate uh, even us from humble beginnings to what we can become. Sir Albert touched many lives and as a business icon on Grand Bahama, he touched the lives of many entrepreneurs from near and far. Not only a community business leader, he was a customer and a friend. And uh, we admired him. He was very helpful in the uh, development of Bradford Marine in coming to Grand Bahama. Chamber member says she worked with Miller for 13 years and notes that he was passionate about Grand Bahama. She notes that this giant of a man also had a very soft heart. He was always available as people came to him very quietly needing assistance, and wherever possible, he helped. He will surely be missed, especially by his family and the countless friends. He kept in touch with those at every level within this country, and he always worked, sometimes behind the scenes, to move Freeport forward. The Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce members say Sir Albert Miller may be gone, but his legacy will never be forgotten. And the Free National Movement Grand Bahama Council also extending condolences to the Miller family on the passing of Sir Albert. As Italia Hall reports, two senior members of the party are reflecting on his life and legacy. No, for base. Sir Albert Miller has left an indelible mark on this nation, in particular Grand Bahama. Many described him as the last man standing of the founding fathers who developed Freeport into the magic city that it was often called. Today, the island of Grand Bahama continues to mourn the loss of Sir Albert, who served as president and co-chairman of the Grand Bahama Port Authority for nearly 30 years. National Vice Chairman of the Free National Movement David Thompson says, we should all give thanks and praise for Sir Albert's tremendous contributions to the island. Our nation has lost another of its great sons. And while we mourn his passing, we give thanks to God for his great contributions. As we know, the march of time is unrelenting, and we are now left only with memories and his great contributions and tremendous sacrifice to building our Bahamas. Thompson noted that he was honored in 1993 to serve with Sir Albert Miller along with Nico Grant and then Senator Barry Malcolm in producing a national economic plan for Grand Bahama. That committee 
which was appointed to consider economic, industrial, and social development for Grand Bahama, was instrumental in bringing about the Freeport Act of 1993, which gives testimony to the many thousands of job opportunity projects and building and school and educational facilities that we now enjoy in Grand Bahama. Thompson added that Sir Albert and the team helped to transform the city of Freeport, developing such projects as the Garnet Lavardi Justice Center, the police headquarters, police dormitories, the Grand Bahama Sports Complex, Sir Jack Haywood Senior High, St. George's High, and many more. My part in that of Sir Albert would have crossed back in 1974. At the time, he was the vice president of Bahamas Amusements, the operators of the El Casino, and I served as the station manager for Bahamas Air. Uh, since that time, both of our lives have changed considerably. Both Grant and Thompson offered their sincere condolences to the family of Sir Albert Miller. To the Miller family, again we say thank you so much for the life and contributions of Sir Albert Miller and may his soul rest in peace. On my behalf and that of my wife and children and members of Nick's team, GB Central, and indeed the Central, Bahama, Central Grand Bahama constituency of which he was a member, offered to Lady Laurie, her children, um, Debbie, Tony, and Russell, their spouses, their children, uh, our sincere sympathy on the passing of Sir Albert. May God grant him rest eternal. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. An international flight that was bound for Grand Bahama Tuesday morning arriving on the island a day late. Sunwing's flight out of Philadelphia was delayed numerous times yesterday, and when the flight attempted to land on Grand Bahama last night, it had to be rerouted to New Providence because the air traffic control operations on the island were shut down. Our Kimberly Mullings was at the Grand Bahama International Airport Wednesday afternoon when the passengers arrived. This has been the worst vacation of our life. So here we are. We don't know. We're supposed to fly out Saturday morning. We don't even know if we're going to fly out. They've told us they hit a bird. They told us they had a dead battery. Then they told us they didn't have enough time for the pilot. Sunwings Flight 4016 en route to Freeport, Grand Bahama from Philadelphia was scheduled to leave at 9.15 a.m. on Tuesday, but that did not happen due to a long delay. Passenger Mary Jane Geringer says she was disappointed with the service provided by the airline and booking company Vacation Express. We finally left Philadelphia International Airport last night at 8.30, 9 o'clock. We finally got on a plane, but they kept accommodating us with $15 vouchers to get whatever we needed. When we got to Philadelphia, they told us nobody knew what Sunwing Airlines was. We called the vacation company four times, and they said, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. So now we finally get on a plane. We come in here to fly into Freeport. And the pilot announces that they've shut down the airport and we have to somehow get into Nassau. The passengers finally arrived on Grand Bahama Island after one Wednesday afternoon, thus losing a complete day of what was supposed to be a four-day vacation. Tourism Director Betty Bethel. Well, we had 186 guests on an aircraft that accommodates 189, so we had a full flight uh, more or less coming in from Philadelphia uh, for a four-night visit. Um, as a result of being redirected to Nassau, they were accommodated at the Malia and then transferred to the airport for departure by Vacation Express today. I spoke with some of the passengers and I must say that um, for the most part they were just very pleased with the arrival experience that they had in Nassau. They said that they were greeted at the airport um, like royalty, they were well treated, well cared for and likewise at the hotel. Despite the fact that there were a lot of last minute arrangements, they felt that they could not have been better welcomed given the circumstances. Tourism officials were at the airport to greet the passengers as they disembarked the aircraft. We did a special 
welcome greeting when they got in the customs hall. And then we gave them burlap bags with our Grand Bahama Island signature on it, uh, filled with rum, uh, Junk New Summer Festival t-shirts, and other goodies. And in addition to that, we also provided them with a, a special welcome letter with an apology and inviting them to the finale of Junk New Summer Festival at Sunset Village on Friday. Busters were waiting outside the airport to transport passengers to their various hotels, and Bethel ensured that the Ministry of Tourism will remain in contact with Vacation Express and Sunwing, as well as the Air Traffic Control Center on the island, to ensure that this type of situation is avoided in the future. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. Thanks, Kim. While the rerouting of that flight reportedly resulted from labor issues surfacing between the government and the Air Traffic Controllers Union regarding overtime pay. According to the Minister of Transport and Aviation, Glennis Hannah Martin, for several weeks the union has been addressing the issue with the Department of Labor as general orders calls for time off for overtime worked. Hannah Martin, however, stated that the union insisted that the workers should be paid under the Employment Act. The issue reached its boiling point last night when an air traffic controller here in Freeport reportedly refused to marshal in that aircraft that was bringing in 186 passengers from the U.S. to the nation's second city. The minister contends that this action is alarming and she is seeking further advice from the Minister of Labor. Meanwhile, President of the Bahamas Air Traffic Controllers Union, LaShawn Gray, says the rerouting of the aircraft out of Grand Bahama was nothing out of the ordinary, and the controller was within his rights. Switching gears now, police in Abaco are investigating a traffic fatality that has left a 30-year-old man dead. Reports are that on Tuesday, August 18th, shortly after 6 a.m., police investigated a traffic incident that occurred on SC Boodle Highway involving a white 2001 Honda Integra that was traveling west when the driver crashed into the utility pole. He was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS personnel. Police are actively investigating this matter, and they are also reminding the motoring public to slow down as speed is a major cause of fatal crashes and serious accidents. And now it is time to ask the doctor. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. Welcome. Yesterday, I addressed the topic of skin molds and whether you should be concerned if you have them. Today, I would like to discuss the importance of performing self-skin exams at least every three months if you have molds and what to look out for. To keep it simple, we suggest you remember the letters A, B, C, D, E, where A stands for asymmetry. If you draw an imaginary line down the middle of the mole, both halves should look the same or symmetric. If a mole is suspicious for cancer, both halves would not look the same, so it would be asymmetric. B stands for borders. Check if the borders of the mole are irregular, blurry, or jagged. C stands for color. Check if the mole is different colors or shades. Remember, normal molds are one color. D stands for diameter. If the mole is larger than a pencil eraser, it needs to be checked by a doctor. And E stands for elevation. Check if the mole was flat and now it has become raised. As I mentioned yesterday, some skin molds can become cancerous. So if you have them, please remember your ABCs. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt and this has been Ask the Doctor. So that's a check on sports right after this break. Shopping Sports Bahamas Air Sea Rescue Association hosting its annual major fundraising event on Saturday. Italia Hall was there and she filed this report. The 45th Bernie Butler Basra Swim Marathon was held on Saturday at Coral Beach and a large number of people turned out for the annual event. The day kicked off with a swim meet that included participants from all around the world. A number of different organizations were involved and all tents were booked out. We have just over 100 swimmers this year, um, which is great numbers again. We appreciate the support from there. We have swimmers from all over the world. We have a couple from Europe. We have about 10 of them from Canada. So, I mean, they're, they're coming in from all over. We have a great party that comes from Nassau every year to compete. Um, unfortunately, they won last year, but um, we, we, we got some special swimmers out there for them this year from Grand Bahama. Spectators also got to see a rescue demonstration. Snisky believes it gives the public a better appreciation for what they do. Um, we actually are tying in with a, a local company here uh, for emergency response, and um, we're going to do a stage of a, um, a drowning patient. Uh, we have a mannequin that we're going to be throwing overboard with a life jacket on, 
and then we're going to call in some assistance from the Coast Guard and the Hilo is going to come down, deploy the rescue swimmer, retrieve our mannequin and bring him to shore where we're going to have the emergency responders now come down, retrieve him from the beach, do a quick assessment on them and then get ready to transport um, them to the hospital. Chairman of the fundraising, Eddie Wan, is grateful for the community's continued support and encourages everyone to get involved. Every other dime is donated. Uh, we really, really, even if you can't be an active member in Basra, please join. It's $35 for the year for, per person, $50 membership for the family. That goes a long way. I mean, it, again, it doesn't sound like much at $50 a time, but you get five, 500 people, $50 a time, now, we're, now we have support. It's Alia Hall, ZNS Total Sports. And that's a quick check on sports.